What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm the Viking as always and this is my review and breakdown for the Chucky TV series episode 1. I'm a big Chucky franchise fan, I like all the movies, I can admit though that Seed of Chucky is probably the weakest and it killed the franchise for more than a decade. But Don Mancini, the creator, who's been involved since 1988, the first movie, decided no, I'm going to come back stronger and he made two very good Chucky movies. Cult of Chucky and Curse of Chucky, which did not get theatrical releases. They were released on Blu-ray, streaming DVD, and they did pretty well. And Brad Dourif, who does the voice for Chucky, is back this time as well. He has voiced the character since 1988. I know the Mark Hamill one, the rebooted one, it was good. I liked it, but it's just not Chucky. It's just not Chucky whatsoever. So I'm glad the original creator, the original voice, the original team, the cast, they're all back for this TV series. It's eight episodes. It's on sci-fi every Tuesday, and I will review and break down every single episode here on the channel. So I'm looking forward to that big time, guys. So look, this episode, I really liked it. I really liked it. It was fresh. It was vibrant. It was very modern. Some of the song choices are very modern as well. Don Mancini, the creator, he directed this episode as well and he did an amazing job at his camera usage in terms of zooming in, zooming out, you know, split screen, stuff like that really added a lot to this episode and I think it was a very good pilot and start to this 8 episode season. What I also love about this franchise is that it brings back its original actors. The Andy character from the first movie, the first kid, is back for this show as well. He will show up at some stage. He's been in the last few movies. Tiffany will show up as well. And also Kyle from Child's Play 2, who was the babysitter. And then, of course, you're going to have Chucky's kids will show up at some stage as well. His twins and then Glenda. So I love how these characters, the franchise, the universe is built and it interconnects with each other and recurring characters show up. But the opening to this episode was very, much a homage to Halloween the original Halloween because a similar shot is had in Halloween where it's Michael Myers killing his sister and this shot right here is a point of view shot from either a kid or from a doll which we don't get to see who it is until the end of the episode but I really enjoyed that kind of tribute to Halloween there big time and actually there's an ad campaign right now out for Halloween Kills and it has Chucky and Michael Myers in an ad together so that's pretty cool crossover maybe we'll get a movie one day Chucky versus Michael Myers then we're introduced to our main character who we will follow throughout these eight episodes and that's Jake Wheeler who comes across Chucky in a yard sale and buys him and the woman selling Chucky doesn't even know where the doll came from but she sells it to him anyway and then he goes off and brings Chucky home and Jake Wheeler is actually a very interesting character in this episode because he goes through a lot and you're already rooting for him after episode one because he has to deal with so many issues at home at school in his personal life you know and it all builds up and you really feel for this character but at the end of the last movie Cult of Chucky which came out in 2017 I think at the end of that movie Chucky's soul was put into multiple good guy dolls so I'm wondering if there is Good guy dolls all over America. So that's something interesting that we could see happen in this series. But Jake brings Chucky home, of course. And actually, what Jake does is he collects dolls. And he rips them apart and he makes sculptures out of them. And that's what he wants to use Chucky for as well. He tries to take his head off. He's unable because Chucky is kind of a human in a doll's body but the cat Jake's cat realizes that this isn't any old doll and is very curious of this Chucky doll and Chucky kind of swipes at the cat and the cat is scared of Chucky but this episode did a great job of building tension because Chucky in a lot of this episode is idle he does not do much whatsoever he doesn't actually do that much killing but it builds up that tension because you know that Chucky's a real doll he could snap at any moment but you don't know when he's gonna snap so there is many scenes where he's in the background of a shot and he's just sitting there and it's terrifying it really really is but then we're introduced to Jake's father who is an alcoholic he's very abusive he does not support his son whatsoever and he's homophobic and Jake himself is gay and his father does not want to listen to it whatsoever Jake wants to go to an art camp his father won't pay for it. he tells him to play sports or to meet girls and stuff like that and he's like why would you want to be away from me for a whole month and also and also we learn that Jake has lost 
his mother. So that's probably why his father is acting that way and Jake is going through a lot in terms of his sexuality, being bullied and losing his mother. But there's a family dinner where Jake's cousin, his uncle and auntie are coming over, his dad's brother, and they're actually twins and they come over and they're actually from a family that is pretty rich. You know, they live in a big mansion, they're well off, while Jake and his dad don't have that much money whatsoever. And they have this family dinner and, you know, Junior is his cousin. And Junior, you can see already, does not like Jake at all. He even makes a sly comment about him being gay. The scouts are looking for gay people. It's cool to be gay nowadays and stuff like that. And that actually pisses off Jake's father because he does not want to hear that his son is gay. He does not like that idea whatsoever. He's homophobic. After his uncle and auntie and cousin leave, his dad goes up to his room and rips apart his sculpture, telling him not to do this anymore, no more dolls. And this shot right here reminded me of one of the Chucky Child's Play movies where Chucky's face gets all messed up. Maybe that's a nod to one of those. But yeah, you know, it's pretty bad for Jake and the environment that he has to live in right now. And the cat that kind of found out who Chucky was before any of us was killed by Chucky. And, you know, Jake is wondering what the hell happened to my doll. But while Jake is kind of researching the good guy dolls, he realizes that Chucky... Well, this doll is actually worth a lot of money. And this money could actually get him through art school. You know, so he puts it up online. He wants to sell it. And he gets a phone call from a mysterious character, which is Andy from the original Child's Play movie, who has popped up in the last few movies as well and will be in this series, telling him, I'm very interested in your doll. I want to buy it. Is that a Chucky doll? And the kid is like, yeah, it's a Chucky doll. Okay, check if there's batteries. You know, is it voice activated and stuff like that? Yeah, it is. Check if there's batteries. He does, and there's no batteries whatsoever. And that freaks him absolutely out. And he does more research about Charles Lee Ray and Chucky and the urban legend that Charles Lee Ray put his soul into Chucky. And even in this shot right here where he, he Googles Chucky, we get references to the first three in the franchise of Child's Play. So that's pretty cool. Love that Easter egg right there. And I love how Andy was able to call him and say, yeah, you just need to give me this doll. Check if there's batteries. Yeah, be very afraid. But, but after realizing how much Chucky is he decides to bring the doll to school with him because if he leaves it at home his dad will just rip it apart and then it will be worthless so he brings the doll to school on the bus but that's going to bring more bullying towards him you know he's already bullied he's already made fun of but now he's bringing more attention to himself and here we get our first look at Devin who is Jake's crush now Devin also has a podcast about murder and about serial killers and stuff like that and he's doing the podcast on Hattensack and his podcast name is Waitford Hattenslash pretty cool name yeah it is but he is afraid to talk to his crush he can't get up the nerve to tell him how he feels or just even talk to him whatsoever but then we cut to the school and people are looking at him making fun of him you know calling him loser and he's carrying around this doll and it's probably not the best thing to carry around high school or middle school but then we're introduced to Lexi who is Junior's girlfriend and guys she's just a Bitch. She looks down on Jake from the get-go. She's just one of these girls that thinks she's the most beautiful thing in the world and she just loves herself and she's popular and she even makes kind of smart remarks about Jake needing money and stuff like that. But then we cut to science class where everyone is dissecting a frog. Jake has no partner because he's a loner he's just there with his doll and he tells his teacher I can't do it I don't like the sight of blood. And the teacher's like it's easy of course you can do it. And while everyone is distracted with their own frogs, and Jake can't even look at his, Chucky picks up a knife and absolutely rips apart the frog. Now, obviously somebody would have seen this in real life, but guys, this is a TV show, don't really worry about it, it's the Chucky franchise, it's campy, it's corny at times, but Chucky does it, and then the teacher comes over and says, Jake, no, this is not what I meant, you know, and Jake's like, I didn't do it, you know, uh, you know. but his teacher is uh, very defensive towards Jake because you know there's a character introduced in this scene of Oliver who seems to be a sporty type maybe a jock type and he is pushing Jake around very very mean towards him and then you have Lexi who is just really mean just a bitch to him which is 
hard to look at at times and she sets up this GoFundMe page for Jake and the doll because he's poor and stuff like that everyone sees it on their phones they're laughing at him you know and the teacher isn't impressed whatsoever and as class ends Jake asks the teacher can you please mind this doll for me until I sell it you know because Jake probably realizes yeah this isn't the best thing to carry around school because I'm getting bullied so much here today I just want to keep a low profile and get on with my day so the teacher decides okay I'll take it Jake don't worry but just as Lexi is leaving the teacher wants to speak to her saying what you did is wrong take down that page I'm going to put you in detention and Lexi's like oh yeah well my mother's the mayor we'll sue the school if you put me in detention stuff like this putting threats towards a teacher and then the teacher's like okay do you want to you want to repeat that threat to another teacher or the principal I think it's the principal she got and she leaves but it's very very interesting because as the teacher was leaving she closes the door she turns off the lights and in this room is Lexi and Chucky so that was a pretty well done scene and Chucky decides to mess with Lexi he laughs he moves she can't see him you know she drops her phone she loses her phone and just as she runs towards the door Chucky is standing there and she is scared out of her mind right now but then the teacher and the principal walk in and then she doesn't have this confidence anymore she's like okay I'll take the page down okay I need to get out of here and she made like a, a kind of a stupid comment like I shouldn't smoke weed before class you know like that's what I'm talking about some of the dialogue especially from the teenagers and stuff like that isn't the best but at the end of the day guys what movies or tv shows really nail the middle school or high school aspect realistically at times it's very corny in movies and stuff like that so i'm not going to give this show too much shit over it but this episode had so many interesting kind of ideas to the camera movements from Don Messini, which I've already talked about. And I thought it was refreshing and really well done from him. So, you know, he deserves big praise for directing this episode. But then we cut to the talent show. And of course, Lexi is the host for this talent show. Jake is in the crowd and she's doing a kind of her opening monologue or something like that but she's just berating the audience members especially jake she's like oh jake eh, here's your chance now to tell dev and his mom how you feel about him because jake is gay and he has a crush on dev and obviously lexi knows this and she just tries to embarrass him it not only in front of the entire school but the entire town of hattensack which is so so mean and that's what i'm talking about you're rooting for jake throughout this entire episode because the people the surrounding characters are just so annoying so mean you just want to see chucky slice them up and i think it's good to build that anticipation because killing off these characters straight away wouldn't have the same effect as killing them off in episode six or seven but then we hear a voice and we know that this voice is chucky and we're all surprised because chucky was left in the school jake hasn't been around chucky for a while and you know chucky says why don't you pick on someone your own size and lexi's like who said that and of course Chucky is sitting behind Jake now in the real world somebody would have seen a talking doll sitting there but again guys it's a TV show just don't think about it too much but Jake turns around picks up Chucky Chucky whispers something in his ear which is to go on stage and this for me was my favorite part of the episode everybody thinks that jake is a ventriloquist and he has this doll and he's doing a stand-up routine and chucky just goes on a rampage he roasts lexi so much and you know what guys it was so satisfying because she was so mean to jake throughout this episode she's a bully and to see Chucky rip her a new one was just brilliant really really well done and that's what I'm talking about in terms of I think this episode really got the tone right in terms of the slasher moments with Chucky and also the humor with Chucky because some of the previous movies like Seed and Bride were just too much of a comedic movie instead of a slasher movie and of course Chucky has her phone because she dropped it in the science class when he was in there with her and he's going through her messages he's like oh there's pictures of of um junior which is her boyfriend oh there's pictures of oliver here as well oh i wasn't supposed to say that so he's exposing her to the entire town and also he goes uh through her search history which is pokemon porn and then why do my farts smell good so she was just so embarrassed and she stormed off the stage and then the principal came out to take jake and chucky off the stage as well so To me, guys, that was definitely my favorite scene of the entire episode because it was so satisfying to see Chucky do that to Lexi. 
Then, of course, Jake has to go home to his abusive, alcoholic, and homophobic father. And the principal has called Jake's father to tell him that he is suspended. So he does not take that well whatsoever. He gets very abusive, physical towards Jake. And then Jake says, it should have been you that died in that crash. Referring to his mother, of course, who died. But, yeah. And then he tells him, leave the doll here. So Jake goes to his room and the father is with Chucky in the room on their own. Which is never a good idea. And then he notices that his whiskey bottle has been drank and it wasn't him. And then electricity starts to be messed with. And then he goes to investigate. And he sees wires all messed up on the floor. And then he turns around. And there's a doll. And it's Chucky just staring at him. Who, look guys. Some people won't like this kill. But it was very creative to me. Chucky just gets sick all over the ground. Or just spews out that whiskey onto the ground. And you know, Jake's father is there in his bare feet. And there's wires all over the place. And then he gets electrocuted. And Jake hears all this going on. He comes down to see his father die in front of him. And it was a creative kill. Instead of Chucky just putting water on the ground or gasoline... He gets sick. <laughs> Come on. You can't write this stuff. So I liked it. I did like it. I was like to myself, what is he doing? But it worked for me. It's Chucky. He does this crazy stuff. And I think this show is an opportunity to do creative kills. We've seen one in the trailer where Chucky pushes a maid onto the dishwasher. And she, of course, gets stabbed because of all the knives and stuff like that. So creative stuff like that is interesting. Then the police come to investigate, of course. Ask Jake some questions. And they ask Jake about... Um, Jake, the school was broken into the other night and all that was taken was uh, a Chucky doll and your teacher said that you gave the Chucky doll to her. Why did you break in? And obviously Jake didn't break in. You know, Chucky broke out. But instead of owning up to it and saying, yeah, well, this doll right here is actually alive and is a killer, then they will put Jake into a mental asylum. It's better off Jake just runs with the story and just says, sorry. So that was pretty smart from Jake there. But yeah, this actual police officer is Devin's mother. And remember, Jake has a crush on Devin. But she's very sceptical of what's going on here. Now with Jake's father being dead, he has to go live with his uncle, who is his father's twin. And they live in a big mansion. They're well off. So that's where we're going to get to see Jake now for the next seven episodes. Is based really in that house. And he has to live with his cousin Junior, who does not like him whatsoever. Also, there'll probably be an interesting side story in this series as well because Jake's auntie seems to be having an affair and Chucky overheard that earlier in the episode and then he even mentioned it in the stand-up routine at the talent show. So that's something that'll definitely pop up again this season. But then he's living in this house with his uncle's auntie and his cousin. He gets his own room and he confronts Chucky. Talk to me, damn it. Say something. I want to talk to you. And Chucky's like, I'm your friend till the end. And Jake's like, I didn't want him dead. He didn't deserve to die. And Chucky's like, I know an asshole when I see one. And you know, and Jake's like, but my father was good before my mother passed away. And then Chucky's like, oh, you're talking about your dad. I was talking about the cat. You know, that's that's just vintage Chucky. That's just so funny. I laughed out loud to that. That was really, really well done. But you know. Jake's father was abusive towards him and Chucky just got rid of him. So Chucky seems to be kind of like, you know, Jake's bodyguard at the minute. The two of them are attached to each other. And, you know, you love Chucky as a character, but he's a serial killer. But you like Jake as a character now as well because you've seen him go through so much shit. He's dealing with his sexuality. He's being bullied. You know, people don't accept that he's gay. His father was abusive towards him. So you really are rooting for this character. It's just now he's attached to Chucky. And it looks like that Chucky will do some of his kills or most of his kills through Jake in terms of Jake will always be there but Chucky's never going to get blamed guys because he's a damn doll so it's so much fun to see how this season is going to go and then Chucky just says to Jake now let's talk about this Lexi you know so Chucky's next target is to kill Lexi so we're going to see the people who have pissed off Jake one by one being killed off by Chucky. And there's nothing more satisfying than watching a bully or somebody who's homophobic or an abusive person get killed by Chucky. So it's going to be interesting if Chucky will turn Jake into a serial killer as well. Maybe a Charles Lee Ray 2.0 maybe. Probably a likelihood of happening. But yeah, I just really enjoy this episode. And I love the style of Chucky because he's not CGI. Don Mancini, the creator of Chucky, wanted to go back to the original kind of 
the way that they made Child's Play 1, 2, and 3, where Chucky was kind of, you know, he was animated in terms of a robot, it was practical kind of doll and stuff like that, and they try and make it as realistic as they can. So Chucky's movements at times are pretty funny and stuff, but they're also pretty realistic than him just running around the place like we've seen maybe in Seed of Chucky. So I do like that a lot, and it adds a lot to it as well. It feels like an old-style horror movie, while also being a modern-day horror movie as well. So I like that. I really, really do. But this episode, guys, I really enjoyed it but then at the end of the episode we got to see what that homage to Halloween was all about and it wasn't Chucky it was actually a young Charles Lee Ray in Hackensack in 1965 and what's going to happen this season guys is we're going to have the main storyline with Jake with Lexi with Junior with Devin and then the old characters like Tiffany like Kyle like Andy will all show up but we're getting a prequel as well we're going to see the origins of Charles Lee Ray how he became a serial killer his childhood teenager adulthood becoming a serial killer meeting Tiffany and then we get to see him what we got to see in Child's Play 1 where he became Chucky so this is either make or break for me because I love horror movies that have that extra mystery element to it like Halloween for example we very rarely ever see Michael Myers face and it adds so much to it the Purge movies are fascinating I know it's human beings underneath those masks but the masks add so much to it they really do on the movie Hush masks add a lot guys so I'm very intrigued to see what kind of story they're going to tell for Charles E. Ray this will either add to the lore of Chucky or mess up that kind of surprise mystery element to Chucky. For me, as I said, mystery is good. But if they have a unique story where they can go back and tell an interesting origin story of Charles Lee Ray, then go for it. I just hope it's as interesting as Chucky is. You know, I really, really do. We're also going to see a young Tiffany because they met when they were younger. I think they fell in love and stuff like that before Charles Lee Ray was a serial killer and went to jail and stuff like that. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. We're going to get to see the origins of Charles Lee Ray. So at the moment, I am a little on the edge, but they might convince me in next week's episode. Thanks very much, guys, for checking out my review and breakdown for the Chucky TV series, episode one. I can't wait to review and break down these episodes weekly. I know it's a pretty long video, but we've got so much stuff to unpack. And we haven't even met the original cast members yet, the recurring characters. And we've got so much Chucky kills yet to come. I'm excited. But guys, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me. Subscribe to the channel for all this movie, TV, news, reviews and trailer reactions. Come follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and Twitter for all this latest movie news as well. I post that as it drops at Movies That Matter. Guys, thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and night wherever you are in the world. And I appreciate you checking out my videos. Thanks guys. See you in the next one. Enjoy.